On Tuesday, November 4th, Polk County voters will decide whether to approve or not approve a transformational switch in the way that transportation in Polk County is funded. The question on the ballot is this, should Polk County levy a 1% sales tax to fund public transportation and road maintenance needs in the future, rather than continue to pay with property tax assessment? Joining me today to talk about the need for the referendum and the future of Polk County's transportation is Commissioner George Lindsay, and we welcome him to Polk Place and thank you very much for attending today. Commissioner, you've been on the circuit for a couple of months now talking about transportation needs and the transportation initiative, also known as My Ride, My Roads, and you uh, are here today to tell our audience a little bit more about the referendum and the needs going on. Polk County has about 2,700 miles of roads that our transportation division is responsible for maintaining. And if you put that as a visual, that's like driving from Disney in Orlando to Disney in Anaheim, California. That's a lot of roadway. Uh, tell us about the transportation needs. You're telling us that we're transportation challenged in Polk County. What's that all, all about? Well, we are transportation challenged, and a lot of things have combined to make that challenge before us. And it's the role of the county commission to anticipate the needs and plan not only for this fiscal year and this budget year, but subsequent years and the next generation. It's not just a here and now problem. It's a, it's a long-term problem that requires a long-term solution. Currently, Polk County is about 610,000 population. And by 2020, we're estimated to be 700,000 full-time residents population in the county. But that doesn't count the seasonal residents that come and spend two or three months or two or three weeks with us uh, off and on during the year and the tourists that come and go through our community on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you add the need to accommodate them also in our infrastructure requirements, that probably takes our effective population by the end of the decade to about 750 to 800,000 folks. So that's, that's part of the need is to anticipate that and, and provide for it. The other challenge is a substantial part of our population live below the federal poverty level. Transportation is a huge impediment to getting to jobs, getting to the doctors, getting to meet their daily needs. So that's an element we also have to accommodate. As you mentioned, the primary source of funding for our transportation needs in the past has been ad valorem or property taxes. Uh, although we do get some gas tax, the vast majority of our revenue does come from property tax. But our gas tax peaked several years ago and actually has declined by about 13% over the last few years. That's mainly attributable to two elements. The good news, bad news. The good news is our fleet as a nation is getting better fuel economy, therefore less, mm -hmm. less consumption and less tax. The other element is simply as the price of gas bounces between $3.50 and $4 a gallon, people drive less and spend less on gas. Fortunately, right now we're enjoying about $3.25 a gallon, something like that, but mm -hmm. that's a very volatile. A gas tax is not based on the value, the, val the dollar value of the transaction, but on number of gallons. So whether gas is $4 a gallon or a dollar a gallon, we only receive the same few pennies per gallon. Our ad valorem, which is the backbone of our funding, mm -hmm. has declined 35% over the last few years also. And uh, that, uh, as a result, we haven't had the, the funds necessary to, to meet those transportation needs. Some years ago, the county commission, before my time on the commission, dedicated one mill of property tax, that's $1 per $1,000 of assessment for transportation needs. That mill has not, is not adequate. Uh, so in the last few years, we've been taking $5 million out of general fund and another $5 million out of reserves to supplement those ad valorem taxes. Uh, those reserve dollars will be depleted in less than two years. So the bottom line is uh, the revenues have simply do not meet the demand. Tell me a little bit about the unfunded projects that we see are being accrued every year to a point now where we have about $430 million worth of unfunded projects. What does that do when those projects backload, backlog like that to economic development in Polk County? It certainly doesn't bode well. Uh, if you, any physical asset, whether it's a road or a truck or a car or your house, 
there's ongoing maintenance needs associated with that. And while you may not need a new roof today, there will be a time you'll need a new roof. You made the analogy of driving from Disney to Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, even if we maintain a quarter of it, the other three quarters will come in cycles. So it's appropriate that we have a, a funding source, a maintenance schedule that, that we don't get behind the eight ball mm -hmm. and uh, maintain those infrastructure needs. Uh, transportation, moving goods and services is a vital part of our economy. Uh, the attraction of uh, any major employer, any major processor, roads are going to be a, pro uh, a major element in their deliberation on locating in Florida and locating in Central Florida and certainly Polk County. I'm going to take you just slightly out of your comfort zone a little to talk about the My Ride portion and the need for public transportation in Polk County. This has been an initiative that uh, the, the Polk Transit has been looking at for a couple of years now into expanding the My Ride and taking a look at, at increased needs for people. Uh, tell me about how uh, the My Ride fits into this transportation initiative with the referendum. Half the proceeds of this proposed tax will go to the roads we just talked about. The mm -hmm. other half of the proceeds will go to improve our rubber tire system, our bus system. Uh, there's been no effort whatsoever to directing these funds toward a fixed rail system or light rail system. That, that doesn't suit Polk County's demographics, it's geography. Mm -hmm. Once a rail system is in place, it's fixed. Uh, but a rubber tire system, an expanded bus fleet, Mm -hmm. uh, is much more flexible. It allows us to customize the need for each of our communities, 17 municipalities in Polk County plus Poinciana, which is a major population center, so, <clears throat> so that we can customize the needs associated with frostproof. They need a, a, a circulator for uh, getting their folks around their community, the doctors and shopping and back to the rest of the system. Winter Haven's needs are different than Lakeland and Auburndale. Uh, so it allows us to, to customize the need uh, almost daily, certainly we wouldn't do it daily, but on a regular basis, we have the capacity to measure any bus route, uh, the number of passengers at any given time, and when demand falls off, we can relocate those resources, and when there is over demand, we can put more resources. So it allows us to customize the transportation to the, the needs of the community. Another major element is second, third shift workers. Mm -hmm. We do a pretty good job of getting folks to work, but if you get off at 2 a.m. at Lakeland Regional Medical Center or Bartow in the, as a nurse or uh, staff, mm -hmm. how in the world do you get home? So by having a taxi access program, a customer can buy a $5 voucher, and that voucher is good for $15 with a taxi provider of their choice. Now, it may not be cover all the, the costs associated with it, but it's certainly more cost effective than running 24-7 you know, bus system, which we're not ready for. Um, another big element is to customize service to, to our east and west, uh, tying it to the airport to Tampa and mm -hmm. also the airport in Orlando. But more than that, the, the commuter bus from the Lakeland area would go to the James Haley VA Hospital Moffitt Cancer Center, continue that route to the Tampa Airport, and then circle back to uh, the park and ride bus. Uh, that route would cost, I think, $10 for an adult. Mm -hmm. The route from uh, Winter Haven would go to Disney, not necessarily to take tourists to Disney, but to take employees to the Disney complex area, the entertainment center. Mm -hmm. Polk County is the second largest contributor of employees to the entertainment complex at Disney second behind Osceola. Uh, six or eight thousand folks uh, work there on a daily basis. Another access to jobs opportunity. That bus then goes on to Orlando and makes the circle back back to Winter Haven. Again, as, as the demand for that service expands, we can add more frequency. If it's seasonally the services uh, falls off, we can back off. But it gives us the flexibility of, of providing that service. Polk County isn't the only county looking at a sales surtax on the referendum uh, for November. A lot of other uh, counties that surround us are, as well as statewide. Why is switching from the property tax ad valorem based 
system of funding our transportation, um, a long-term solution that a lot of counties are looking at, and, and the sales tax being better for people. Well, I think it's a recognition that that there's perhaps less volatility and more growth potential on the sales tax side than there's mm -hmm. the ad valorem side. Uh, you're right, there are other counties that are uh, seriously considering it. Another big element is to uh, take the demand off of only the property taxpayers and place it on everyone who participates in commerce throughout the community at whatever level that may be. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly the more affluent have more uh, disposable income for making taxable spending. The, uh, the less affluent, the low income, uh, some have said are, are more damaged by it or more uh, uh, will pay a greater share. Uh, certainly by definition, low income, it means they don't have a lot of income and a mm -hmm. lot of discretionary spending. So that's why the, the state legislature in adopting the rules about sales tax exclude residential rent, exclude residential uh, utilities, uh, groceries, and uh, pharmacy. So those basic needs are met uh, and a, a lesser amount of discretionary spending is, is taxable. Uh, Hillsborough is looking at a sales tax initiative. Pinellas has one on the ballot this November. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin County, uh, Lachua County, I believe um, Hernando also has, is taking a look at it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and Seminole recently passed theirs about within the last year. So it is an opportunity to, to switch gears. Uh, it will not necessarily be a dollar for dollar switch, but uh, um, with a corresponding reduction in property taxes, there will be um, uh, still significant savings. Well, yes, if Polk County does adopt the extra one percent or one cent on the on the dollar with their sales tax it gives Polk County one of the highest sales taxes in the state however when we drop the ad valorem that puts us in a pretty good place when we take a look at comparing property values doesn't it it does the uh, that the sales tax is just half of the story uh, we did a comparison of the surrounding counties to Polk County uh, there are 27 counties in Central Florida that surround us. 23 have a millage rate higher than Polk County. Only four have a millage rate barely lower than Polk County. To our west, Hillsboro would have a 10.6 mil for county taxes. Uh, we would be at 6.5. Orange County is a little over 11, and Osceola is a little over eight. So when there are folks looking to relocate uh, businesses or expand their businesses, in the area, uh, the, the two main questions they ask, uh, the economic development professionals tell me, mm -hmm. the first two questions they ask, what are your schools like? Mm -hmm. What's your property taxes? Uh, rarely, if ever, does the question raise, what is your sales tax? Um, and by spreading the base, uh, we allow those visitors and those transient uh, folks coming and going and seasonal residents mm -hmm. to, you know, to pay a proportionate share. Some have estimated that to be as low as 11 percent uh, and others have estimated to be as high as 28 percent. I don't know what it is but it's certainly something so in our comparisons and our uh, evaluation we've targeted about uh, conservatively that 20 percent of the revenues would come from those who do not reside in Polk County. Well, as a property owner, I'll see a decrease on my property tax bill that comes once a year, but quite possibly I could be paying more with the switch in sales tax, and a lot of that would be dependent upon my discretionary income, correct? Yes. The, um, for those folks who live in the Lakeland urban area, the mm -hmm. Lakeland area mass transit district, which is beyond the city limits of Lakeland. LAMTD is not a department of the city of Lakeland. It's a separate taxing authority. Mm -hmm. I have the privilege of serving on that board with my colleague, Mr. Hall, and three city commissioners. Mm -hmm. We are the governing board and we set the millage for that service. That millage is a half a mil. I mentioned earlier the one mil that the county commission lev levies if this sales tax initiative passes, then in the Lakeland urban area, 
one and a half mil would be a reduction off your county property taxes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take your total tax bill, you just got your trim notice a few weeks ago. There's yes. a bunch of things on there. Yes. City and school board and water management district and county taxes and whatever else might be on there. That part of the bill that is your county taxes, if you live in the Lake and Area Mass Transit District, will be reduced by 20%. That same tax, if you live in the rest of the county, with one mill reduction, would reduce your county property taxes by 13%. Now, what does all that translate when you know to your dollars and cents? Mm -hmm. The median household income in Polk County is about forty-three thousand dollars. The additional one percent sales tax each each resident each home would spend a little over a hundred dollars a year in additional sales tax. The savings of a one mill reduction is about seventy dollars. Mm -hmm. The net additional taxes that each home residence would pay is about $39 or 11 cents a day. Uh, less than you throw in your cup holder when you go through the McDonald's drive-in when you throw your change in there. Uh, and what does that look like at the cash register? Mm -hmm. When you go to check out at Publix or Winn-Dixie or anywhere else. Or Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> Uh, a three dollar tube of toothpaste would cost three cents more. Mm -hmm. uh, if you went to the sporting goods store and bought a pair of eighty dollar Nike jogging shoes, it would cost you eighty cents more. If you need to replace your old TV with a new forty two inch LED HD TV, uh, if it costs about four hundred thirty dollars, that would be additional four dollars and thirty cents. Now. Nothing in this proposal changes the state sales tax laws. There's nothing new, nothing old, no mm -hmm. nuances. Whatever's taxed before is taxed after. Whatever is exempt before is exempt after. And as such, the surcharges have a $50 max on a single purchase. Now, if, if you go to the store and you bundle a bunch of things and your, your expenses or your ticket is more than $5,000, mm -hmm. it's each item. But if you go buy uh, a used car for 5000 the maximum you will pay is $50. If you buy a new Ford F-150 or a Silverado for $40,000, mm -hmm. you're still going to pay a maximum of $50. Um, so th there are limits, and it doesn't change the current tax code. It stays the same. Very good. Thank you so much. Commissioner Lindsay, thank you for sharing some time with us today and talking a little bit about the sales surtax referendum that will be on the ballot November 4th. We remind you, PGTV shares this information as a public service to educate you, our residents, as a, a public service of the county. It's not intended to advocate a position. And we do ask you to go to our website, polk-county.net, transportation referendum, to get more information and to view an example ballot. 